You know, when watching this movie, I couldn't help but feel like it was really cold in the cinema. I guess that really adds to the atmosphere. Hi, I'm Danny Quinn, and welcome to the latest episode of First Impressions. On today's episode, Jeremy Renner and Elizabeth Olsen abandon their superhero suits to investigate a mysterious death in Wind River. The movie is set in the Wind River Indian Reservation in Wyoming, where hunter Corey Lambert, played by Jeremy Renner, stumbles across the dead body of a young woman who is frozen and barefoot, and the autopsy reveals that she has wounds and injuries that indicate that she was raped. So in steps FBI agent Jane Banner, played by Elizabeth Olsen, who allies with Corey as he is much more familiar with the landscape than she is, and they ally together to try and solve the mystery, all while Corey attempts to come to terms with his tragic past. Wind River is part of an unofficial trilogy of films that director Taylor Sheridan calls the American Frontier Trilogy, which consists of this film, Sicario, and Hell or High Water, the latter two of which are also written by Sheridan. And indeed, all three films do have very similar themes. They're gritty dramas that deconstruct a lot of American myths, often set in economically ravaged or isolated and desolated parts of America, and are very character-driven movies. And indeed, Wind River plays like a mix between the two movies. The ominous action and the story of a main character being in a place where she is not familiar with is very reminiscent of Sicario, but the harsh and isolated setting coupled with the slow, melancholic tone definitely brings to mind hell or high water. But while Sheridan has proved himself to be a solid writer in the past with his previous two films in this American Frontier trilogy, in Wind River he definitely proves himself to be a very skilled director, and he definitely cements himself as a talent to look out for in the future. His direction throughout is absolutely fantastic, particularly with his use of storytelling techniques and mise-en-scene. And he also demonstrates that he is a very good visual light. It's a very good looking movie. The cinematography in this movie is absolutely fantastic and the shots are constructed so well with such an attention to detail. And the shots of the landscapes as well are just absolutely stunning. And the sound in this movie is just phenomenal. It does such a great job of capturing the atmosphere and just how rough and cruel it really is. The animal sounds as well really sell it. And Nick Cave and Warren Ellis' score really provides a very melancholic soundtrack throughout the whole thing. It's definitely one of my favourite scores of the year so far. And Sheridan also brings a lot of flair and skill to the action in this movie. There's not a lot of it, and it isn't very flashy or heavy with a lot of explosions and shooting. But when it's there, it's very well staged and set up. It's brutal, it's tense, it's scary, and it's very unnerving as well. Definitely reminiscent of the action scenes in Sicario. There's a lot of moments in this movie where I was just holding my breath because the action was just so tense. I really like whenever an action scene can be scary, and that's definitely the case of the action in this movie. However, it's Sheridan's script that really makes this movie great. It adds a lot of depth to what could have been a very routine murder mystery. The main theme of this movie is grief and how people deal with it. And there's a handful of scenes of the girl's family and we see just how her loss affects them. And there's some really emotional scenes between Renner's Lambert and the girl's father, played by Gil Birmingham. Lambert has also lost his teenage daughter in a very similar way, so he knows what it's like to lose somebody like that. And the movie takes its time setting up just how his life has fallen apart as a result. We see that his marriage has collapsed, he's distant from his son, so whenever this young girl shows up dead in a very similar way, who is a very similar age to his daughter, you can understand his reasoning for wanting to find out who did this to her. And Lambert's grief also manifests itself in the way that he interacts with Olsen's Jane Banner, who's this very inexperienced young FBI agent, and he's almost like a father figure to her. You can tell that he really sees a lot of his daughter in her. And Renner does an absolutely outstanding job in the part. I really like Jeremy Renner as an actor. I think he's very underrated. I don't think he really gets much appreciation because I think most people just look at him and think of him as that guy from Mission Impossible or Hawkeye or not Jason Bourne. And even in movies like American Hustle or Arrival, he's not really a major part in them. He's very much a supporting character. So it's great to finally see him get the chance to carry his own film. And he absolutely nails it. I think this will definitely go down as a career-defining performance for Renner. Likewise, Olsen is absolutely incredible as Banner. She's very much an outsider of this very harsh, cold and uncompromising setting. The very first time we see her in this film, she shows up to the murder scene without even so much as a coat and she has to borrow one from the locals, otherwise she'll freeze to death. And there's this childlike imagery that highlights just how ill-equipped and how vulnerable she is. And she's forced to adapt as the movie goes on. She's a lot like Emily Blunt's character in Sicario in that they're both characters in this very harsh and unfamiliar world that's very different from their own. And they're both ill-prepared and ill-equipped to deal with it. 
And like I said, Olsen does an absolutely incredible job in the part. It's definitely one of her best performances. And she has good chemistry with Renner and their scenes together, which isn't really all that surprising considering their past couple of roles together. As for problems, I don't have too many. The only real issue I have with the film is a certain scene towards the end. Without spoiling anything, it's a big reveal that happens towards the end of the movie. And the way that they incorporate it into the film just felt a little bit clunky. But seeing as the movie isn't just about solving the murder of this young woman, and the movie isn't your standard murder mystery, I'm a little more forgiving on that than I otherwise probably would be. However, the film does flow by very quickly. I'm not going to lie, it felt like it was very short. The movie's just under two hours and it felt like it was only 90 minutes long. Not complaining by any means, just observing. In the end, Wind River is absolutely fantastic. It's definitely one of the best movies I've seen so far this year. Taylor Sheridan really cements himself as a talent to look out for as he examines themes of grief and injustice in a very cruel and literally cold world. The cinematography is beautiful and the use of sound really captures the primal nature of the setting and there's a great sense of atmosphere throughout. And the performances are terrific. Jeremy Renner really carries the movie in a career-defining performance. And Olsen and Birmingham both match him in equally terrific performances as well. While that Cave and Warren Ellis' melancholy score provides the perfect soundtrack to Sheridan's visuals. I'm gonna give Wind River a 9 out of 10. I definitely recommend seeing Wind River. It's a really good film and definitely a very solid contender for my favourite film of the year. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back soon with reviews for Mother, Kingsman the Golden Circle and American Assassin among several others. But in the meantime, feel free to like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. I can also be found on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And if there's anything I can do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And until next time, I'm Danny Quinn and I hope you have a pleasant evening.